Hello and welcome to another in-depth weather discussion for August 24th, 2021. We're still looking for tropical potential to be in the horizon as we near peak hurricane season. And so we're going to be taking a look at the models and see what has changed and what could potentially happen, even potentially before the uh, anticipated first tropical system that we talked about in yesterday's video. If you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video, leaving a like helps me get this video out to more and more people to try and get the word out as well subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information of course for the best information please go to the national hurricane center the storm prediction center and your local weather forecasting offices no matter where you are looking at the wide view satellite imagery here for the atlantic basin we have a lot of cloudiness specifically around central america right over here and it just so happens that it's monsoon season over there. And so there's creating a lot of upward motion, a lot of rising motion, and a lot of vorticity potential in that general vicinity. There's also an invest designated out there in the Pacific. However, according to most of the models, it's not forecasted to impact areas along land. So that is the good news. However, we do have a couple invests here in the Atlantic to talk about with Invest 97L being right here and Invest 98L being just south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Now, of course, we're going to want to talk about that here, but I do want to take a look at the water vapor imagery just to show you all what progressively we are looking at from a low and high standpoint. And uh, hopefully this will allow us to continue to break down the environment as we see it. So we have a low pressure system right here with Invest 98L right in that general vicinity. You can see the counterclockwise motion in the atmosphere with that one. You also have Invest 97L right here, which is not in the best of environments at the moment. You can also see it does have a slight counterclockwise motion to it, but you also do see a lot of this dark air around it, and that indicates a lot of dry air, and that dry air will most likely limit the... Uh, formation of this system until it can uh, become relatively moist in the atmosphere because tropical systems do not like dry air what dry air typically does to tropical systems is it limits showers and thunderstorms and even though there's quite a bit of showers and thunderstorms with this thing at the moment it will be still fighting that dry air and that probably will limit tropical development for another few days and then we also have some showers and thunderstorms across the board here off of the East Coast. We have the remnants of Henri moving off into the Atlantic provinces of Canada. And then we also have a trough here that is basically interjecting with a basically a cutoff low pressure system that's moving on through and up the East Coast. Uh, eventually it will, I should say. That low pressure system isn't exactly anticipated to do all too much. But the thing that we need to watch out for is this other tropical wave that's just to the south of it here in the Lesser Antilles. And that'll basically supply a jumpstart of moisture that'll continue to move through into the Caribbean and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if we take a look here at the National Hurricane Center's five-day tropical outlook, we have a lot of things here that we uh, just talked about that are showing up right on here. So we have Invest 98L down here indicated in this yellow with a 20% chance of formation over the next two days and a 30% chance of formation over the next five days. We also have Invest 97L uh, over here, which has a 20% chance of formation over the next 48 hours. However, as I mentioned, it's not exactly favorable for it to continue to develop. And then you also have a 60% chance of formation over the next five days. And we'll show you something interesting here from the GFS model as we continue to get closer and closer to that. And then we also have disturbance number two over here, that giant tropical wave that I mentioned that'll eventually move off towards Central America. And that also has a 60% chance of formation over the next five days. And so areas near the Yucatan Peninsula, as well as Honduras and Belize, and uh, even Guatemala in some, uh, some portions of that aspect, need to watch out for this tropical system as this continues to get closer and closer to them. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS model here. I uh, was just looking through and seeing what exactly what could, uh, what could potentially happen here um, out ahead of time. So I didn't exactly reset it, but here you go. This uh, We're going to be taking a look at the uh, 
the simulated rain, the simulated radar reflectivity in this instance. And this also shows you a good instances as to why I was talking about with the low pressures, but also the high pressures that we couldn't see, or at least we could see if we uh, looked at it a little bit more in depth. But we have a high pressure right here. We have the remnants of Henri over here. We have a low pressure that's right below Greenland. And then, of course, we have our waves here, our uh, designated areas to watch as this continues to move on through. So uh, let's continue to move on through with this slideshow. You can see that that wave that uh, harbors Invest 97L is going to be encountering two high pressures. However, what basically happens with high pressures is you have a lot of clockwise uh, steering flow with them. And uh, with it, the big thing here to remember is that high pressures, whenever they create wind shear, they spin in a clockwise fashion, whereas a low pressure system goes counterclockwise. And so that could really be a huge contributor as to where tropical systems actually go with uh, how wind shear basically guides that overall activity into the areas that are surrounded by these major systems. And so uh, just keep watching here as that system continues to move off towards the north and that tropical wave in the Caribbean now starts to really gain traction. And this is where we need to watch out for both systems for the most part. This one maybe not as much over here with 97L, but more this one over here towards Belize and Honduras and even the Yucatan Peninsula, this thing really starts to gain a lot of traction as it continues to move on north. Of course, it encounters land, but then what happens afterwards is it actually continues to head on further and further north due to the fact that you do have a high pressure right here centered somewhere over Georgia. And as I mentioned, that high pressure system uh, creates a lot of wind shear that moves in a clockwise fashion. And so it's basically going to create a lot of wind shear coming from the south and east. And that's going to guide it further and further uh, somewhere along the coast of Mexico and Texas, more or less, if this thing does end up forming. So the time frame here to watch as uh, we backtrack here is sometime in the end of this week from Friday all the way down into next Monday. And, uh, of course, we're going to continue to monitor the intensity and how that will continue to function as we get closer and closer to the system. But just definitely something that we need to watch out for here from a uh, short-term perspective because this system has consistently been showing signs of uh, development along with the models. And uh, if that is the case, then we could be potentially talking about our next tropical system here in the Atlantic. Of course, the system over here in the central Atlantic continues to go about, might even become a hurricane at that point, according to this model, and it even becomes a strong hurricane in that instance. Uh, but speaking of uh, potential hurricanes, according to the GFS, that system that actually makes landfall somewhere near Mexico and Texas actually becomes a high-end tropical storm to maybe even a hurricane in that instance, so something to watch out too. Uh, I mean, I guess we can't really ignore the fact that this system becomes as large and as strong as it does, but uh, fortunately for us, doesn't exactly uh, seem to be near any sort of land, so that is the good news with that essence. But I want to also watch out here real quickly uh, for the Caribbean. The Caribbean is going to be a very big hot spot for the most part within this general vicinity, and the reason being is because there's a lot of above average sea surface temperatures over there, and it's not just at the surface either. It even extends further down into the water, and whenever you have a lot of those above average sea surface temperatures over in that general vicinity, and they uh, not exactly are just at the surface, they extend further down into the water, that, can, uh, that creates a lot of unstable energy. Uh, we talk about how the severe weather uh, convective available potential energy or uh, the displacement between warm air rising and cold air sinking creates energy for severe thunderstorms. In this instance, what creates a lot of energy for tropical systems is a lot of warm, moist air that's created by these warm sea surface temperatures. And if tropical systems can pull that energy out, they could potentially become rather significant. So you'll see here within the next few slides that it really starts to kind of try and get its act together. And then once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it becomes rather significant and hits almost the exact same area that uh, the other storm prior, about a week prior, actually hits as well. So 
Uh, it's just all about how this thing continues to move about. Of course, these tracks aren't exactly official. The models are uh, very interchangeable at this instance, um, especially with how far out this uh, model run actually is. We're talking about two weeks in advance here, so uh, models can definitely change within this time frame. And of course, it's all about just looking as to where the area of potential development actually is. So what we've been getting from the models here for the most part is that the Caribbean is the area to watch within the next two weeks as we continue to approach the peak of hurricane season, which is sometime in the beginning to the mid parts of September, uh, sometime around September 10th, September 11th. And then, of course, just to finish out the model run, of course, this is going to be the most... Uh, this is going to be the lowest likelihood of uh, actually playing out here. But uh, we do have a couple tropical waves that continue to uh, move about, some of which go north of the Greater Antilles and end up forming, maybe impacting Bermuda. Uh, that is definitely a likelihood, but as I said, the uh, models it, this far out is very inaccurate, so I wouldn't take this with a full, uh, with a full, you know, I would take it with a grain of salt, if you know what I mean. And then, of course... Uh, towards the end of the model run, more development according to this model is possible in the Caribbean. So as I said, that's going to be the big thing to watch out for is that general warm, moist air and the warm, moist sea surface temperatures over there in that general vicinity. Taking a look at the cyclone, uh, the cyclonic vorticity, I should say, for the most part, uh, low pressure systems tend to generally create a lot of vorticity. And so if you see a lot of yellows, oranges, even dark reds, specifically dark reds, that can indicate a lot of uh, vorticity and a lot of potential for it to be tropical. Invest 97L being right here, 98L being right here, and of course the tropical wave to watch somewhere in the Caribbean. We'll see how this plays out as this continues to move on through, but the big thing here, the big eyesore for the most part, is this high pressure system that's just basically sitting over Bermuda or the classic Bermuda high, as well as this other high pressure system that's over here, uh, it's just right in the center of the Atlantic. And that's basically going to create a lot of steering flow, as I mentioned, to move this tropical system out in between these two high pressures. And uh, for most of you who might be wondering, well, why isn't this storm basically getting torn apart? There's a high pressure right here. There's a high pressure right here. Wouldn't, the wind, wouldn't there be winds coming from both directions in this instance? And you are correct in this in, uh, for right now, except for the fact that the wind shear on the uh, eastern high pressure over here actually is a lot stronger, uh, creating a lot more of a steering flow than the high pressure over B uh, Bermuda due to the fact that you have a lot of 5 to 10 knot wind shear coming from the north. So... A lot of northerlies that are very weak, a lot of southerlies that are very strong, and that's the reason why it takes this tropical system to as far north as it does. Now, as this continues to move further and further, uh, you can see that this system over here with 97L uh, does or does really start to uh, basically really kind of congeal, if you will, and uh, that's going to be something to really watch out for, of course. For the potential development in that aspect not exactly a threat to land but then you also see a lot of vorticity that really start to spike up here and uh, this is around thursday evening into friday morning and the reason why i say just wait until friday is because usually these tropical systems don't exactly flip a switch and they form they take a little bit of time before they start to gather its center area of low pressure and it's almost as if it's kind of like an elongated process more or less so of course we're gonna have to watch out for around Thursday, but it's not exactly going to be the time frame in which it will most likely form. It will most likely be sometime along Friday into Monday before we really start to actually watch out for this potentially being named. Of course, I can't remember the name at the, you know, at the moment. So uh, if you were to ask me as to what the name for this tropical system or either of these tropical systems could be, I honestly cannot remember. But the big thing here is that uh, the potential for development with this system is very likely as this continues to progress further and further. And sometime on Sunday into Monday, according to the GFS, this is uh, th where the potential landfall most likely could be. And it's more or less, as I said, due to that high pressure, I'll create these wind barbs here again for you, um, the uh, general flow of the wind shear. And this takes it very much so up to the uh, 
it, it creates a lot of southeasterly wind that pushes it off to the north and west. And so I would not be surprised at this high pressure if it actually goes a little bit further south. But we could be talking about areas here near Texas and Louisiana as a potential landfall spot. But if this high pressure does indeed stay over somewhere near the Carolinas, then yeah, it most likely will be heading off a little bit further south more than anything. But uh, definitely something to watch out for as this continues to progress. And then another thing here too is that uh, if we take a look at this high pressure system over here right off the coast of Africa, if there's any tropical waves that are going to continue to move on through, of course we have this steering flow that's going to continue to push it off, but it's going to stay relatively far south, meaning that there potentially could be a lot more activity here in the Caribbean if these uh, if these tropical waves continue to take that southerly track, and that'll basically stay somewhere south of the uh, the Greater Antilles and somewhere near the Windward Islands, creating a bit more of a southerly track and an approach more towards the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, it's a, somewhat of a prediction at this point as to where the most activity will be within the next two to three weeks. But just something that I had to look at due to the fact that there is that massive high pressure system that sits right there and it will most likely force most of the moisture that does induce tropical activity, these tropical waves, to stay a bit further on the southern side as it continues to move about. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for the video. If you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest in-depth weather information that I will be providing for you all. Of course... For the best information, please go to the National Hurricane Center, the Storm Prediction Center, or your local weather forecasting offices. But if you, do, as I said, did enjoy the video, feel free to stick around in the future for more interesting weather content. That's going to be it for me. Stay safe, everyone, and thank you for watching. Peace out.